Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Coffee and Devotions with Adam. Listen, I want to I want to answer a question that I, I I get asked all the time. Uh, I hear it a lot, and just in just in conversations, I hear it on TV and stuff all the time. And the question, maybe maybe you guys have heard it too. The question is, um, how could a loving God send anyone to hell? You know, like how how could this loving God send people to hell then? And I get the point because. After all, we talk about this very personal, loving God who created everything, started life in the beginning. So how could this God who loves us so much condemn anybody to a place of torture and, and suffering and, and damnation? I mean, heck, if it were me and I created the universe, then I'd, I'd make it so people could go online and, and get a, a get-out-of-jail pass or get-out-of-hell pass from Amazon.com for nineteen ninety five. you know? Well, it, it's not up to us. It's it's up to God. But here's the thing. The problem with the question itself, the how could a loving God send anybody to hell, you know, or how, how could this God send anybody to hell? The problem with that question in itself is that it is flawed at its very foundation. Okay? You see, that's why it makes it hard for people people to answer and that's why it makes it difficult for us when we hear it and 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 a lot of times Christians just don't know what to say you know we're like uh so let's break it down a little bit okay and let's see what the Bible has to say about it um, first of all it's wrong to assume that God sends anybody to hell look at second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 back from my awesome little Bible app on my phone it says the Lord is not slow concerning his promise as some regard slowness but is being patient toward you because he does not wish for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. In other words, there is no part of this loving God that takes any pleasure in the punishment of the unsaved. His desire is for everybody to be with him and fellowship with him in heaven. It's not for people to go to hell. He doesn't take any joy in it. Now, now I've seen, I've seen some Christians, on the other hand, and I use that term loosely, that find joy in people struggling and people going to hell. They find joy in knowing that there are certain people that will find and spend their eternity in hell. But that's not the heart of God. That's not God's desire. That's not God's thought process. That's not his heart. And that shouldn't be our heart. God doesn't want anybody to spend any time in hell. He's loving in a way that you and I will absolutely never understand. We may try. We may say, oh, you know, we really want to understand the heart of God. But we never will. It's way too big for us to grasp, and I've told the youth in my church that all the time. You guys know that. There are just certain things we have to accept, and that's one of them. He doesn't want anybody to spend any time in hell. So then how do people end up in hell? If God's not sending people to hell, how are they ending up in hell? Simple. Their own stubbornness and refusal to believe. That's what sends people to hell. Period. You see, it's our choice that ultimately leaves God no choice. Does that make sense? So you're like, then, wait a minute, Adam. What about those people? And I, I hear, I hear, I hear it I'm echoing in my ear right now. They're like, what about those people that have never heard, man? You know, what about those guys that, that have never heard anything about God? Okay. First of all, we live in 2010. In case you didn't know, um, and and there's a there's a second thing about this. It, let, forgetting that we live when we do now. Let's go to Romans chapter 1 verse 20 and this was written how long ago? Okay, so let's look at this. He says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes, His eternal power, and His divine nature have been clearly seen because they are understood through what has been made so people are without excuse. Everything about God has been clearly seen and understood through what has been made, so the people have no excuse. In other words, what he's saying here is that there is not a place on earth that God has not put up a giant billboard that says, I exist. That's it. And don't you think that God might be smart enough to get the truth about Jesus to whomever he chooses? Just a thought. I don't know. So the bottom line here, and what I'm trying to say, guys, is that it's the fact that hell will have anybody in it at all breaks the heart of God. It breaks the heart of God that even one self-deceived person can can base their eternal their eternal destiny and and their 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 salvation on what seems fair to them. 
truth be told, if fairness were God's standard for the universe, we would all be ending up in hell. Look around you guys. We have really screwed up this planet. We screwed this place up. And God could ultimately hold all of us responsible. But he doesn't. Instead, he comes running to our rescue saying, Hang on guys, I'll be right there. Don't, don't, don't lose hope. I'll be right there. So the real question today, the real question that you should be asking is how could a God so holy and loving send his only son to die for me? How could a God so holy send a perfect creature to die for somebody the likes of me? That's the question that I'll never be able to answer. I wonder it a lot. But I'm cool with it. And I'm thankful that he did. Maybe that's the question that we should be throwing back out into the inquisitive minds and the inquiring masses. Just a thought for you guys. Cheers.